Alright guys, so this is basically how we open a new file in 3D code and we're going to uh, select this large voxel sphere, we're in voxel sculpting mode here and I'm going to show you how we can make a simple rock um, geometry. Uh, so we'll have a low poly uh, mesh with a uh, high frequency detailed normal map baked down to it. And we're going to do it fully within 3D code, and then in the end we're going to upload it to Sketchpad. So we're going to go through every single step. Uh, right now, what I've done with my voxel object, I've simply um, uh, moved it a little bit. Now I've switched over to surface mode, um, and now I'm applying noise. Okay, so I'm just adjusting some of the settings here. Uh, I'm making the area larger, and now I'm just adjusting the fall off. So basically the way noise works is it's applying a black and white map onto my uh, my sculpt surface and uh, that curve that I'm adjusting is basically defining um, what is what is the profile of the white areas and what is the profile of the black areas. So on the left is black and on the right is white. Um, so you'll see I'm having like uh, these hills with a, kind of a deep fall off into these valley like craters. So what I'm doing now is uh, I'm taking this sculpt and I'm retopologizing it. So um, normally it's better to do an automatic or sorry a manual retopology, but uh, here I'm doing an automatic one. So I'm setting the uh, poly count to about 2,000. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to go through a few dialogues here um, where 3D code is going to automatically uh, guess the best way to. Uh, read apologize this uh, this high high frequency uh, sculpt. Okay, just clicking next here. Um, I encourage you uh, when you're doing this to just read through the options. It's fairly self-explanatory and it will give you a better sense of um, how you can make some adjustments uh, that will be beneficial to your overall workflow. But yeah, so we're just waiting here. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so once we have the uh, the retopologized um, rock, um, basically that gives us a nice like proxy mesh that we can use to bake our high frequency details down onto it. But before we're ready to, to actually apply any texture maps to the to the low poly geometry, um, we're going to have to unwrap. You're going to have to UV unwrap that that uh, those polygons um, and map. With that 2D unwrap, with that unwrap, you're going to be able to map your um, your 2D images, our texture maps to the uh, to the three dimensional object. Okay, so here you're seeing how we have a uniform um, low poly approximation of that uh, sculpt. Okay, so I'm just looking around it just to make sure there's no holes or gaps. Uh, sometimes when we do the auto topo, uh, it does the the best it's can. It does the best that it can, but uh, sometimes there are some uh, polygons missing. Uh, so in this case, it looks like it turned out pretty well. So now I'm uh, using my UV tool, Mark Seams, um, and I can just basically put my cursor over top of the seams that I want, and I can left click um, to select one uh, edge, uh, or I can hold down Shift, and it'll it'll select a, a the longest path that it's uh, that's uh, available to it. When it ends, uh, when it, it basically ends at any kind of like, uh, star kind of formation where I have three or, or five, um, edges coming together in one point. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around here and, and my thinking is I just want to, uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking about this as though, uh, if I am, Creating, if I were to stitch this, if I were going to kind of make a, uh, uh, a toy version of this, so to speak, um, I would want to kind of have these flat pieces of cloth that I could stitch together in a certain way that would make this that form. Um, and I want to make sure that they would lay down flat and they would kind of work nicely. The best way to think of it is like a baseball. You can kind of imagine a baseball has those, uh, those two flaps of fabric that are stitched together. Um, 
So that's kind of exactly what we're doing here. Um, but you're noticing I've done a, I've done an unwrap, um, and I'm seeing red and blue in that two dimensional, uh, square, um, image. And, and that's not ideal because that means there's some stretching and there's some contracting in certain spots. Uh, so ideally I want everything to be fairly gray looking. Um, so that's why I'm adding some more, uh, cuts in here now. Um, and I'm going to do another unwrap, uh, once those are done. Okay, so again, my, my mindset is I just want to uh, try to make sure here that that I have a fairly flat pieces of um, uh, the the UV islands that, that they would wrap nicely around this object, so I don't have to have too much distortion or anything like that. And uh, just an important thing to to make note of now. Um, this by no means is like the best approach to UVing. Um, it's a rock, it's an organic surface, and I'm working in a uh, application which allows me to paint over top of the seams. But a lot of times we can't do that, so sometimes it's good to uh, to be able to unwrap, or sorry, basically to hide your seams. So put them in a place where uh, the the viewer, so whoever is looking at the object afterwards, wouldn't be able to see them. So in a rock, uh, you try to have them probably at the bottom or the back, depending on where they're going to be seen from. In this case, uh, you know, you're going to probably be able to see it from every single angle, so you're not going to be able to hide the seams uh, that much. It's not as big of an issue nowadays as it used to be because we do have these uh, applications like 3D Coat and um, Substance Painter um, where we're able to paint directly on top of the seams. Uh, but back in the day when everything was done in Photoshop, um, it was a bit more of an issue because you'd have to try to get things to match up and line up properly with Photoshop and it was not uh, quite so easy. Alright, so here I'm, uh, I'm ready to bake. So I've unwrapped it. Uh, I'm baking it now. Uh, I'm just setting my bake settings and you'll, you'll notice in that previous screen I had a cage. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that no aspect of my, my sculpt was poking through that exterior shell of the cage. But it all looks pretty good. So here I'm actually going back and I'm naming everything. I want to name my UV set. So my UV set is the two-dimensional um, parameters that are basically being mapped to my three-dimensional objects. And that's basically how uh, in 3D applications... Um, that's basically how in 3D applications they understand uh, where the you know the colors from a 2D image should apply to your 3D mesh. Because every single vertex on your 3D mesh is being um, mapped to that 2D image. So it's having 2D coordinates in addition to the 3D coordinates. So UVs are an extra extra component to your 3D mesh. Okay, so here I'm actually, in the way in 3D Coat works, um, this is my voxel sculpt. Um, so I'm renaming the layer that I'm baking from because that's going to give, drive my, uh, the name of the, the layer in my, in my, in my paint layer once I, once I've baked it. Um, I've also renamed the retopo object, uh, to rock geometry because that's going to basically be what my low poly mesh is going to be, it's going to be called. So I've named, renamed the UV map. Um, to rock underscore UV, I've renamed the mesh uh, to rock underscore geometry, and I've renamed uh, the image, uh, the textures that we baked onto my onto my rock uh, as rock underscore textures. So here we go. We're baking it now, and so I'm going to turn off the visibility of my sculpt because we can also paint on our sculpts in a 3D coat. So I just don't want it to be a distracting thing that we see. So this is just my uh, my geometry now, my low poly geometry with my high frequency details mapped onto that mesh. So you can see there I'm showing the wireframe now. You can see all the uh, uh, that it's a low poly object, but it looks like it's high poly because we have the normal, normal map applied. Okay, and so this is not what we're normally going to do, but this is a pretty handy way to make rocks if you need to. Um, generally speaking, we're going to have a more uh, sophisticated sculpt where we're actually more so in control or driving the details of that sculpt uh, before we do any baking. And again, ideally, we're not relying on auto topo. We're uh, actually doing a manual retopology uh, of our mesh.
So I'll try to do a video of that later uh, to show those who are interested in doing a manual retopology of, uh, of your sculpts. But uh, for the purposes of today, this is really simply to show us uh, the full walkthrough of creating a sculpt, uh, retopologizing it, um, UV unwrapping it, uh, baking from high poly to low poly, and then uh, ex exporting and then putting it into a uh, 3D renderer. In this case, it's going to be Sketchfab. So here I'm exporting my uh, my mesh. Um, I'm using the settings of Unreal 4, my preset settings, uh, and I'm choosing the maps that I need. I don't need emission. Um, I don't need displacement. So I'm only using uh, a few maps that will actually be applicable. Okay, so this is a previous model I uploaded with some emission. Okay. So now I'm uploading to Sketchfab. Uh, I go to Sketchfab, I create an account, and I've just chosen to upload. I choose my rock OBJ. So the geometry, I just choose that. I click Upload. And put in the description. If you want, you can make the model private if you have a paid account. Um, I'm, in this case, I'm allowing download. So if anybody wants to kind of check this out and, and see how it's put together, um, they can do that. And the account is full circle CS. Uh, so just, I'm putting in a description here. Okay, so rock model and texture demonstration example, continue. Uh, and then from here, my, my model will be live. It'll be loaded up. Uh, so it's not live. It's, it's in the system. It's not published yet. You'll see I have the option there to publish. But before I do that, I want to edit the 3D settings. So I've just clicked on edit 3D settings here. Um, and there you see my low poly geometry. Um, nothing super fancy at this point, but I'm going to add my textures now. And that's going to make a big difference. So I'm, Going to add my textures. I've uploaded all my uh, my textures that I need for this object, and then I'm basically now going through my different menu options and applying uh, the various maps. Okay, so I don't need a metalness. I don't need a specular in this case because it's a rock object. Um, okay, so I've applied my roughness, and that basically just says where it's rough and where it's smooth, so it interacts more uh, realistically with the light. Uh, this is my normal map, so this is where we're going to start to get the details. Um, I noticed after the fact that I need to flip the green channel. Um, I'll fix that later. But, uh, but yeah, you can kind of start to see the details. It's starting to come out. It's not quite um, what I had liked. Quite as nice as I had liked before, but once I flip the green channel, it's going to start to get a little bit better. And the reason for that, the whole RGB, uh, red, green, blue of the normal map is basically, um, red, green, blue corresponds to X, Y, Z, um, and it tells the, uh, renderer which angle to show the normals, uh, of that particular part of the geometry. Anyways, I'm here, I'm putting here a, a light setup. So I'm adding a simple uh, lighting system. I'm turning down the brightness of my uh, background HDRI and Sketchfab. And the way HDRIs work is basically the uh, the environment map uh, that's in the back there is lighting my object. It's treating it as though it's a, a realistically lit by a, a, an environment. Uh, Okay, so now I'm just going to go into my post-processing, uh, I'm adding some settings here, uh, sharpness I really like to use, I uh, kind of pulled, them, pulled everything out. This is where I started to notice that my, my, there was a problem with my normal map, um, so that's where I went back, and I just flipped that green channel. Good to go. Yeah, you can see the difference already. All right, so again, just playing around with my uh, pro processing uh, effects. Uh, this is not necessary, but I, I generally always do this because I just find that it makes the, the whole thing look a little bit more uh, appealing. A little bit of bloom so that you get that, those uh, 
highlights kind of glowing. Take my color balance a little bit, get my shadows cool and my uh, my highlights a little bit warm. So I get a little bit of uh, warm, cool contrast going. You don't want to overdo it. I might have done it a little bit too much, but uh, but feel free to play around with it. Okay, so I'm, I'm generally liking the results that I'm having here. Okay, so now at this point I'm just looking for uh, a, a light map that uh, that works for my purposes. So I'm going through, uh, there are a lot of presets in uh, Sketchfab where we can kind of choose what they, they already have and see what uh, displays our model in the best light. Okay, so that's pretty good. So that's by no means an in-depth uh, exploration of Sketchfab. It is a fairly straightforward application um, or tool. Uh, I encourage you to, to go through and, and kind of look and play with some of the settings and see how things work. Um, but uh, what we've done uh, up until this point now, I've published it. Um, what we've done though is we've really, we've kind of walked through the entire process of the game uh, asset. Uh, very simple, very straightforward, you know, a lot of it was kind of automated for us, but um, it's taken us through the entire pipeline. Uh, so again, with Sketchfab, we have the opportunity to share things. I'm just going to make a little share here. But, uh, but yeah, I encourage you to download the model, check it out, um, see if it, uh, see how it works, uh, and upload your own. Like, download Sketch, or you can try out uh, 3D Code, um, and follow through this, with this tutorial and, uh, kind of see the same steps that I took. Um, you can also use other applications. By no means you have to use 3 code, but I just found that uh, this way is probably the quickest and fastest and the most straightforward way uh, to get from sculpt to to kind of uh, a basic model that you can upload. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to walk you guys through that process. Hopefully that was helpful. And I'll share some future videos on the retopology process where we're doing manual retopo and things like that. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful and I'll talk to you guys next time. Alright, take care.